This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Well, that took a while, but we have our first episode for YouTube for the Yumiko route. Oh boy, it's Jan from the office. Oh, and we got the, the really good music. Oh man, it's Yumiko's dad! <laughs> he never opens his eyes! ファーストコンタクトにおいて若干の拒絶反応はあったものの、その後は調査員とも比較的良好な関係が築いており。もういい。はい。アルデラさんでしたか。とりあえずあの親不孝者の動向は承知した。あお。He <laughs> まだ何か。どうも私の言っていることがそちらさんにはきちんと伝わっていなかったようだ。いいかね。そもそも私があなた方に頼んだのは、うちの娘の単なる素行調査などではない。と申しますと。あのような馬鹿でかい重要施設。
少しばかりそちらの余力を割いてもらっても。Oh, look at that! Look at that! He's so happy and friendly now! Look at that face! How could you say no to that face? こちらの納めている税金と、そしていくらかの心づけのおかげで、どれだけそちらの組織が動きやすくなっているか、アルデラさんほどの人間なら、わからないわけでもあるまい。私どもの組織に榊社長のお心遣いを知らぬ者は下っ端を除いて一人もおりません分かっているじゃないかでは早速だが由美子を改心させるための何か不安はないかねうん How could we make Yumiko do what you want her to do? うん I think amnesia might be the only option そう、急に言われましてもそうだこういうのはどうだろうこちらで仕組んでおいた連中にユミコを襲わせる Yes, I can't see how this could possibly go wrong He's talking about his daughter, by the way Yumiko is his daughter Wow, this guy sucks <laughs> This guy really sucks How could I just don't see how this could possibly go wrong? It's foolproof. It will definitely not make things worse. Um, that's not how it works. This guy's the head of a business and he's this stupid? Really? <laughs> JB agrees. I have more than one. <laughs> what? JP, you suck! Oh, that's how they're gonna set up Yuji and Yumiko. There's no way they would do it naturally, so they have to basically force us in a situation. Oh, so we're gonna be her bodyguard. He's gonna hire some people to, like, attack her. Yuji, being the superhuman that he is, is gonna beat them up, and Yumiko's gonna be Oh my gosh, you saved me! Date me! I, I'm calling it. That's how it's gonna go. そこまで強い危機感を与えることはできません。ですが、一度彼に護衛をさせた上で、危機に陥ることとなれば。なるほど。危機感はより一層強く。I can't tell if JB is actually thinking that this will be the case or if she's just trying to、uh, minimize the damages. はい。いいだろう。その件については、ハルデラさんに一任。<laughs> This sounds like the episode of a cartoon. <laughs> ah! <laughs> well, what cartoon show would do an episode like that? No cartoon show that I would watch. <laughs> oh boy, back to the dormitory. <laughs> There's no such thing as a fun job. Means that your job sucks then. Of course, you'll find plenty of people willing to declare that work brings them nothing but joy. But look around them or underneath them, and you'll always find scowling people covered in mud. More often than not, the person who loves their job is really just the biggest slacker in the office. Work is unpleasant and often boring. Boring? That's how you say that word. It's often boring. That's why they pay you to do it. If something you were doing in the first place just naturally becomes your job, you're either a genius, an idiot, or incredibly lucky. Why you? What? <laughs> oh yeah, my job! I, uh, I clean fast food restaurants! Yeah! <laughs> Take up trash! That's how I would do it. Unfortunately, I'm none of the above. By most standards, my occupation is just about the last thing you could describe as fun. It requires steady, rigid discipline. There's no tolerance for failure, but even in successes, you'll never see the spotlight. On top of it all, it demands specialist expertise, extensive experiences, and training even when off duty. It's a little hard to summarize, but I guess you could call me a craftsman of sorts. 
Well, I guess those would be the typical examples, but craftsman is a pretty vague term. There's quite a range of people who fall under that umbrella. Although you tend to think of those working with material objects as in Machina's examples, there are some who engage in more abstract forms of workmanship. And the craftsmen in my line of work deal with... Eh, uh, the craftsmen in my line of work deal in the most formless thing of all. Anyway, uh, what's with the sudden interest in my job after all this time? Hardly that interesting a subject. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> We're just like, I'm going out to my job. It's like, why are you dressed like an assassin and bringing a gun case with you? Uh, there's there's a lot of a lot to clean in Taco Bell. You know how it goes. Don't ask questions. <laughs> I'm not doing anything weird. <laughs> that a fact. Hmm. Not that I'm constantly acting, but I have been trying to keep my behavior fairly normal, so as to avoid projecting the atmosphere characteristic of my occupation. Even so, it seems there's a degree of stiff artificiality to my performance that may have an equally unsettling effect on my classmates. A deeply regrettable failure on my part. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait for them to stalk me on my job. That's definitely gonna happen. <laughs> well, the last one everybody does, and it's not right, but... Makina makes fun of you more than Yuji does. <laughs> okay, well, in his defense, you do pretend to be really stupid. So... You can't really blame him for the... Well, you can blame him for the first one, but... He at least has a reason for doing that. <laughs> I was wondering what that last phrase was for. Yuck, get those out of here. I don't know. There's no appeal to bananas for me. More like Ukiki. So, are you guys done asking me questions now? There haven't been any many cases since my arrival at this school, and I was grateful to Michiru, but her ability to rapidly derail conversations is truly welcome at times like these. Hmm? Oh, that's my mom. <laughs> but just as I'm about to wrap things up and make my leave, a cell phone rings in my pocket. Unfortunate timing. I slide it out and check the caller ID panel. JB, huh? Most contact from JB in any form means a business discussion. Accordingly, I'm always careful not to answer her calls when the others are in earshot. I leave the dorm and walk a few paces before hitting the answer button and bringing the phone to my ear. It's me. You'll have better luck finding the proverbial free lunch than a job that's genuinely fun. And mine is certainly no exception to the rule. Oh, we're going back to the dorm... back to the dormitory, alright. When you live in a communal residence, you're always going to find some people you hit it off with, and some who are harder to handle. In my case, I think I would not be able to be friends with anybody in this game. I feel like I can get along with most people. The people in this game would drive me freaking nuts. Ideally, you find points of compromise and stay on cordial terms, even with the difficult residents. One of those underappreciated little skills that gets you ahead in life. Unfortunately, 
I don't possess it. In this storm, I guess Amine would be the first on the list in terms of friendliness, although in her case it's less hitting and off and more hitting on. Ugh. Dear lord. What a sad reality you live in if Amine is the person you get along with the most. Next in line would be Sachi, but she's got some abnormal quirks that can be tricky to handle, so her rank falls slightly. Makina and Michiru have a hard time even holding coherent conversations, making it a little hard to evaluate if we think in similar ways. But if I humor them with a little attention, they'll start chattering away all on their own, so in a sense they're easy enough to deal with. I might not be blessed with much in the way of social skills, but even I can interact with those four without particular difficulty. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> this girl, however, is a different story. We were on seriously hostile footing from the very start, if by that you mean she, we, she tried to kill us. And our frequent chance encounters in the dorm haven't really helped. There's still a sense of tension in the air when we run into each other. Granted, that's a bit of an improvement compared to the way she used to slash at me with a box cutter on sight, but her attitudes remain stubbornly standoffish. There's no sign of a real thaw in relations. Well, I got news for you, Yuji. They're, they're going to have to fall because this is the Yumiko route. Looking around the area in a slightly forced way, Sakaki mutters those words without particularly directing them at me. Amine's out shopping with Makina. Said they'll be back this evening. The principal called Sachi to run an errand for the school, and I haven't seen Michiru all day. I mean, she's got a cute design, but also she just got a, a permanent scowl on her face, so... When I answer, she glances at my face for a brief moment. The conversation dies there. Sakaki once again begins moving her eyes across the pages of a novel I'm sure she has already finished reading. We may not talk much, but I've learned enough about Sakaki over the last few months to say that we've got a surprising amount in common. We both enjoy reading, and we don't mind spending time alone. We're both prone to mull things over in languid, sky-gazing sessions on rooftops. But similarity doesn't have much to do with hitting it off with someone. When it's two similarly unsociable types like us, it's easy for conversations to stagnate awkwardly. Asymmetrical interactions where people compliment each other through contrast actually make for a much more harmonious atmosphere. <laughs> the opposites attract for a reason. Every once in a while, Sakaki's eyes flick up off the page to shoot a quick glance in my direction. Might sound like a girl in love, trying to secretively keep an eye on her crush, but the reality is less idyllic. She seems to be trying to figure out how to extricate herself from this awkward situation. Although Sakaki's clearly bothered by the heavy silence in the air, I don't find it that uncomfortable. That's because you're either a sociopath or a psychopath. You're one of those two, Yuji. I don't know which one yet, but you're definitely one of them. After piling the four books I bought from my room on the table, I lean back on one elbow and begin my, to work my way through the first. It'd probably be more considerate for me to take the initiative and leave, but owing to certain circumstances, that's not going to happen this time. <laughs> Apparently reaching the limits of her endurance, Sakaki abruptly drops her book onto the coffee table and stands up. Before I can even react, she turns to free a clock and begins, starts to walk away. Looking up for my book, I call out a question before she can make her getaway. You going somewhere? Sakaki's progress pauses, but after a moment she walks off without so much as turning around. Her slippers squeak against the hallway floor with an orderly rhythm reminiscent of a soldier on the march. Alright then. Snapping my book shut, I rise quietly from my seat and begin to walk off in the same direction. With a steady regular gait, just like Sakaki's, following in her footsteps. <gasps> Ooh! Ichigaya! We haven't actually been here before. At least, I haven't seen this before in the game. Oh, it's, and it's a flashback. You can tell because it's sepia. You want me to play bodyguard? So, Sakaki Yumiko san no ne? Desu? Oh, yeah. Her. I'm familiar with her name and face. Other than that, my information's pretty limited. Not really. I mostly just run and eat beans, and that's it. I have no idea what you're trying to imply, but she's just a classmate, and we're not particularly close. JB picked up a thick file from her desk and passed it to me. It contained a bulky bundle of A4 sized documents. The first page had a photograph of Sakaki's face, along with some simple bullet points concerning her background. I did receive a very basic overview of the girl's personal circumstances when her father visited the school. At a glance, those pages didn't contain much beyond what I'd already heard from the principal. 
But the fact that we had a file on her in the first place reinforced my impression of Sakaki's importance. I see. With a background like this, I suppose a bodyguard or two might be warranted. So it would seem. They're really trying to shoehorn this in. Makes sense so far, but you want me to protect her by myself? I think you give Yuji too much credit. Don't overestimate me too much. It'll end up biting you in the ass. Ooh. I'm allowed to use the force? Understood. Let me go and get my Magnum A380. The reason I've been poking my nose into Sakaki's life to the point of following her around, it's not a manifestation of any personal feelings on my part. Yet. But rather the result of a perfectly legitimate order handed down to me in a professional capacity. Since I've been employed on this in this role, I fully intend to approach it seriously. In my line of work, your orders have absolute priority, even when a job happens to involve a close friend or relative. And protecting a classmate from approaching threats is something I'd do without being asked. So I didn't have any real reason to refuse this particular position. Plus, they also will kill you if you don't. The f through this rather abrupt sequence of events, I assumed the role of Sakaki Yumiko's bodyguard. Without her knowledge. Uh, that ain't gonna last. She's gonna be like, bro, why are you following me around? And we'll be like, oh, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> want to make sure you're okay. She's gonna be like, stop it. And we're like, we, we can't. We literally are not allowed to. And yeah, she's gonna find out in about two minutes. However, I, although I'd anticipated as much from the start, her, the mission in question quickly encountered a number of practical difficulties. Hey, Yumiko, I, I I, just, I really want to hang out with you today, you know? I just, I feel like it. Yo, where are you off to? Have I? That's the idea. Yeah, so where are you headed again? I didn't catch it the first time. <laughs> Yumiko's fun to hang out with. Y you know, you know, I would enjoy hanging out with Yumiko more than I would enjoy hanging out with all the others. Provided that she doesn't try to kill me with a box cutter. Because she, she wouldn't talk. That would be great. Why? Going somewhere in a hurry? I like I like my quiet in real life. Mmm, fascinating. That's so. Good to know. Alright, you're free to go. Okay. Okay, then, let's go. I am disappointed it didn't start playing the spy music. Why the again? It's not like we run into each other. <laughs> let's try that again. Not like we run across each other that often. <laughs> you know, I just... Mm. I, I, uh, I, you, you know, I, what can you do, <laughs> right? I mean, like, it's just, it's just a crazy coincidence that we happen to keep running into each other. <laughs> do I not find Russian folk instruments suspicious? Nah, nah, that seems pretty normal. Just your imagination. By the way, are you headed anywhere in particular? <laughs> She's been much more patient with him than I would be. 
Oh, somewhere you can't tell me about? Everything alright? Hmm. How many times are we gonna hear her feet clamping <laughs> off? <laughs> well, you didn't answer the question. Pretty rude. Why is she giving me the cute face, but the box cutter in her hand? Those circumstances are what I'm asking about. If there's some kind of a problem, then... Oh, uh, mm, I get it. I get it. You want to get a drink from the vending machine and you don't want me to know what flavor you choose. It's fine. Just get peach iced tea. Peach iced tea. You're going to hate it. Yeah, I believe I have a solid grasp of the situation. My apologies. Enjoy your trip. <clears throat> She's really on guard. Well, not that you can blame her. From that moment, I began putting instructions into my practice. That's not how the sentence said. <clears throat> Let's try that again. From the moment I began putting my instructions into practice, Sakaki's gotten a great deal more wary around me. The reason, of course, is my abrupt intrusion into her bubble of isolation. It's entirely understandable. When someone who hasn't demonstrated much interest in you suddenly develops an acute interest in your movements, anybody would get a little suspicious. A little? But since I'm acting on orders here, retreating outside of her comfort zone isn't an option. We ain't gonna be following her in the bathroom, are we? Ooh, Sachi's investing in the stock market, apparently. Oh, they're playing a game? <laughs> you know why he would do that? Because Yuji is the type of person to be like, Well, I have to follow her everywhere. Okay, it's like, you can't go in the women's bathroom. Don't care! Order say I have to! <laughs> and then he'd be really weird in there. Because it's Yuji. That's why. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Sachi, you can't buy the last railroad. You can't buy the reading railroad. <laughs> reading railroad. They gotta be playing Monopoly. Actually, you know, I actually kind of agree with Sachi there. No. <laughs> Mitru, we respect you too much to patronize you and let you win. <laughs> Goodbye. After returning from class, I was immediately invited to participate in playing a board game of Machina's. Not that I was given much choice in the matter. It's based off of a simple dice-moving game. Depending on the square you land on, there are options to purchase stocks or property. With the development, you can extract rent on others who pass through. That's the basic outline, anyway. Oh, so this is like Monopoly meets Fortune Street, then. Machina seemed pretty confident she'd win, but once we actually got started, Sachi picked up the strategy with fearsome speed. She's been slowly, cruelly squeezing the cash out of us like juice from a grapefruit. <laughs> もうこれ本気で散る散るの生きる道なくなったのよさ。えっと、一応さちで、ミードしてもユージで、この巻きなで、よく六も散ち。ああ、ダメだ。すんだ。ああ、本当だ。どこと待っても金座りまくりじゃ
これは金のなる気なのゲームが終わった時にこの株があることによって売ったお金で順位が逆転するかもしれないんだからあこの鉄道の買い占めでみちる様の株は全滅ですね暴落して紙くずですわお In particular, Michiru is being economically annihilated on a scale that reminds one of the old Soviet Union's downfall. Oof. That's bad. <laughs> on a scale of one to post -war World War I、uh, Germany after the Treaty of Versailles, how, ba how, how bad is the inflation? Guess her luck's just terrible, but it seems like every time the girl makes a move, she ends up falling into a trap of Sachi's and forking over her liquid cash. If this game were taking place in a Mahjong salon or something, I'd seriously be wondering about weighted dice or something at this point. Oh, it, sound it sounds like Mitru has my luck in games. <laughs> wow. The outcome of the battle's already been decided. Just give in. In that moment, just as we all stood on the brink of abandoning resistance against our dominant foe. Oh. Hey, girl. Sakaki strides quietly out the front door without so much as a glance in our direction. I'm going out for a while. Sorry, I just. I, they're, they're having a sale over in、uh, Sears, and I, I just gotta go! <laughs> yeah, I just remembered something I have to do for work. Sorry to skip out early. You free finished the game without me, alright? How about one of you take over my position? It'll be a good exercise in parallel processing, right? Anyway, see you later. Get Omine to play! Where the heck's she at? <laughs> I, I think the answer, Simpsons R Us, is yes. They have cute designs, but their personality be stank. Oh, now she's here. Yeah, the sale at Sears. You know how it be. <laughs> well, I was chasing the whole woman, actually. Excuse me, I told you I was going to the Sears sale. You weren't listening. <laughs> you guys are weird. <laughs> you need to leave. He freaking did it. The very thing I asked him not to do. Gee, you're, that might be the pot calling the kettle black there. You, you were stalking Yuji's stalking. You, actually, well, okay, he is definitely a stalker, but you guys are too. <laughs> wow, they would not allow a joke like that in newer games. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Yumiko! What a coincidence seeing you here! I was just gonna order something to go. <laughs> Talking to herself softly, Sakaki picks her way through a shelf of art supplies. Her outing to the station area was evidently an extremely minor errand. Seems like she's just replenishing her stock of artistic materials. 
Mishima Cape gets a fair amount of traffic, but it's still a small city. There are plenty of inconspicuous blind spots and back alleys where frets could be lurking. I keep a diligent eye on Sakaki from behind, checking for suspicious characters among the other customers, and watching for any vans nearby that might be used for a grab-and-run as she leaves. After killing a little time rummaging around in a used bookstore, Sakaki glances up at the dark purple sky and makes her way out of the store. Slipping her newly purchased paperback into the paper bag with her art supplies, she sets off on the road back to school with the same steady pace as always. Following from a distance, I jot down a few quick notes in today's events into a pocket-sized memo book. Abnormalities in the subject's vicinity. None worth noting, I guess. Today in particular, every se everything seemed reassuringly normal. 